concept of the communication system in support of a deployed task force envisages the establishment of a major communications node close to or at the destination airfield. The node would link with any needed communication detachment, minor nodes, or facility extensions that are deployed with forward elements. The system handles command and control, administrative and logistics traffic. The composition of the communications node is determined during the initial planning stages, considering the distances involved, the speed of service needed, anticipated levels of message traffic, forward extension requirements, the need to access other systems, existing communication facilities, and available logistics support. The resulting structure ranges from a basic long-range communications terminal to a self-supporting communications entity with integral facilities for forward extensions, a message center with switching facilities, remote telephone and teletype installations, and maintenance and administrative support elements. The long-range communications terminal functions as a key component of the communications system, providing long-range voice and secure teletype rear link circuits into a strategic gateway station, providing voice and secure teletype traffic to forward detachments of the deployed task force, and is capable of acting as an extension of the military aeronautical communications system, passing traffic to aircraft of air transport group. The troop encompasses three air transportable terminals and a basic complement of operating and maintenance personnel. Each terminal's equipment includes transmit and receive shelters, two diesel generators, components for three major antenna assemblies, maintenance equipment and associated spare kits, and a variety of general stores to support the daily running of the terminal. National Defense Headquarters is responsible for the operational control and tasking of the LRCT troop, and the command looks after the custody, training, readiness, and operational efficiency of the terminal. The Task Force Recce Party includes LRCT representatives who locate a suitable operational site for the shelters and their associated antenna fields, identify the technical parameters associated with the location, and determine the amount and type of ancillary support required to sustain its day-to-day -day activities. The LRCT is normally deployed by two C-130 aircraft, usually in conjunction with the Task Force Advance Party or with the ATG airlift control element, using CFB Trenton as the departure airfield. The terminal's send-off is coordinated by the Regimental Embarkation Officer, and a troop team assists the Mobile Air Movement Section with the loading of the shelters and other equipment. The shelters are winched into the aircraft and other equipment is positioned in accordance with the aircraft load table. Unloading at the destination airfield is accomplished with a forklift handling the general cargo and by winching the antenna dollies, generators and shelters down the ramp. The forklift and prime mover are also required to position the components of the terminal and assist with the setup. Careful ground handling of the shelters is required to ensure that the units are neither damaged nor overturned and towing may be done only at low speeds over smooth, hard surfaces. Road movement beyond the immediate vicinity of the airfield will require flatbed tractor trailers. 
A typical site layout for a terminal at or near the destination airfield requires an area approximately 350 meters to a side, well clear of ongoing vehicle and aircraft traffic. The transmit and receive shelters are centrally located and are interconnected by pre-built control cables. The generators are located nearby and are hooked up to each shelter. The receive and transmit antenna fields are established adjacent to their respective shelters. Operational and technical control of the rear and forward circuits are maintained by the senior terminal personnel operating from within the node complex. The basic facilities provided by a long-range communications terminal include a 10 kilowatt radio on the gateway circuit and a single or dual 1 kilowatt radio installation for use with forward detachments or for air ground air communications. Each terminal can provide secure voice circuits and encrypted half or full duplex teletype channels. A phone patch facility on either radio can be extended by the LRCT operator to a distant subscriber. A selective calling feature to communicate with strategic aircraft using either transmitter and a telephone switchboard allowing terminations for local subscribers, exchange trunks, and radio telephone circuits. The single one kilowatt radio unit incorporates a voice and data modem for forward use with a communications command mobile radio detachment, while the dual one kilowatt installation permits interface with a task force radio teletype detachment. Local 220 volt power is used to operate the terminals. Should adequate local power be unavailable, the 85 kilowatt generators will be employed. They consume approximately two drums of diesel fuel each day. The antenna systems are erected and maintained by the terminals personnel. They also deal with configurations involving permanent structures. Each field may include sloping V, omnidirectional and log periodic antenna enabling rear link and extended forward link operations. The two fields occupy the bulk of the ground allotted to the terminal site. The LRCT troop lacks sufficient personnel and equipment to develop a self-supporting communications node. Augmentation will normally be required in the form of additional maintenance personnel with their specialized equipment, administrative personnel including cooks and a kitchen where no messing services are available, a stores detachment with an increased scale of general stores, a passenger transport vehicle and driver for shift rotation and local liaison, and a security section to assist with the initial setup, local defense and construction support. The risk assessment within the deployment area dictates the degree of security augmentation. Security in a low risk area would be mainly handled by the deployed terminal personnel. Medium or high risk areas require a security force which will travel with the terminal or join up with it at the destination airfield. It provides guards and roving pickets which control access to the LRCT site and the antenna fields and prevent unauthorized entry of personnel to the communications center. The terminal deploys with a 15-day basic load of fuel, rations, ammunition and water, plus a 30-day supply of essential spare parts. The balance of all required material and services, including medical support and ground transport, is normally provided by the Task Force Administrative Organization or under host nation support agreements. Certain unique requirements for spares and repair services are handled by NDHQ. The Long Range Communications Terminal is a vital link in the communication system supporting a task force. Its specific problems of personnel augmentation and on-site support must be considered in planning any deployment scenario.